Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and in this video now we are going to study how to perform the breadth first algorithm on a directed graph. So we will take a quick recap of the important points that we need to remember while performing breadth first search. So the first one is that while performing breadth first search we traverse the nodes level by level. Okay, so we traverse the nodes level by level and the second one is that we use a queue we use a queue to traverse the nodes or we use a queue while performing the breadth first search so we'll take an example and we'll see how this happens so let's take this example and in the same manner as we did yesterday we are going to process this so uh, this one one is our start uh, start index so how we do it we first of all we take a queue this is the front end this is the rear end again we always insert the nodes at the rear over here okay and we take the nodes out from the front okay so we nq at the rear and we dq from the front so now since uh, there is no element present in the queue initially. So when I NQ1, when I insert 1, it automatically moves to the front. Okay. So now to process it, what will I do? I'll take this out. I'll mark my node visited. Let me mark it like this. Okay. So now 1 is visited. I take it out. And what will I do? I'll insert its neighbors into the queue. So its neighbors are which? the nodes from where uh, the nodes to which i can reach from one directly okay are its neighbors so like over here if you see i am able to reach two from one then i'm also able to reach three from one and i'm able to reach four from one so basically the ones having directed edges from one to themselves okay so now th therefore i'm going to insert these nodes into the queue so i insert two three and four then again to process the next node i am going to take two outside so the which node am i going to process the first one or the node which is present at the first position in the queue okay because we can only dq the topmost element or the first element of the queue okay so now i take two out and what will happen now I'll mark it as visited. Okay. And then what do I do? I process it. And to process it, what will I have to do? I'll have to insert it na its neighbors into the queue. Okay. So what are its neighbors? There is only one edge which is moving out of two and reaching three. Okay. So there is only one node from uh, to which I can reach from two, which is three. So I'll, I'll insert 3 into this queue. But 3 is already there, right? But 3 is already present there. So that means I have nothing to do over here. So this is done. We have completed with it. So we'll move on to the next element, which is in any case, which is 3. Okay. So now what will I do? So uh, again, I'll have, I like to clarify over here that over here, I did not insert 3 into the queue because it was already there. So no action is performed over here. I just marked 2 visited and I moved on to the next element because its neighbors were already in the queue. Okay. Okay. And therefore I am not marking this edge as well. 2 to 3. Why? Because I never traversed this. I never, I never followed this edge because 3 was already there in the queue. Okay. Now next. The th uh, next element that I will DQ is 3. I take 3 out. And I insert its neighbors. So as you can see, there is no edge which is going out from 3. So 3 has no neighbors. Actually, it is connected with other nodes. But since there is no edge which is going out from 3, we would say there are no neighbors of 3. Okay. So we do not do anything over here. We just mark it as visited since we have visited this node. Okay. Okay. So now we move on to the next element, which is what? So, we take 4 out and what does happen now? We mark it as visited 
and we move to the nodes which we can reach from 4. So I am able to reach 6 and I am also able to reach 5. So what will happen now? I will insert its neighbors which are 6 and 5 into the cube. Okay. Okay. So next is what? I will take 6 out. Mark it as visited. And since there is no other node which we are able to reach out from here. So we are done with 6. Then we move to the next element which is 5. Again we take that out. We mark it as visited. And again there is no other element which we are able to reach from out from 5. Because we 5 is uh, 5 have, has its neighbor as 3. But 3 is already processed. Right. So because 3 is already visited. So there is no unvisited node which we are able to reach from 5. Therefore we are also done with 5. So now finally what we will do. We will write the BFS order. So what do you do to write the BFS order? We did it in, a, in our previous video. We write the order in which we process these elements. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 5. Okay. And now in my previous video I also uh, told that there may be multiple BFS orders which are possible. Right. So as you can see over here while processing 4 over here I wrote the neighbors as 6 and 5. I could have also written as 5 and 6. And in that case the order of visiting these nodes would have been 5 and 6. So the BFS order might vary. So therefore another BFS order over here could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Similarly while uh, processing 1 I inserted the neighbors as 2, 3, 4. I could have also inserted as 4, 3, 2 or in any different order. And uh, with respect to that the BFS order would have been different. So as you can see there are multiple BFS orders which are possible over here. So finally we are also going to draw our BFS tree which is going to include the edges that we have traversed over here. So from 1 to 2. So I am so this time what I did was I just marked the edges which I was actually traversing to visit the nodes. So I am just going to draw those edges over here now. So this way it is very easy. Then from 2 there was no other edge. 2 to 3 we never traversed. Then from 4 I went to 6 and I went to 5. Now there were some other edges also which we did not traverse, right? So let's see which are those. Let's mark them with red. 2 to 3 we never traversed this edge. Okay. And then there was also this 5 to 3. And there was also this 5 to 1. Right. Let's mark them over here in the graph. 5 to 1. 5 to 3. And then 2 to 3. Now if we just notice that what these types of edges are. 5 to 1 as you can see. This edge. This node 5 is basically the child of 1. Indirect child. It is basically child of 4. And then 4 is a child of 1. So this 5 is basically a child of 1. So therefore this uh, is a back edge. Okay. Why? Because it is moving fro uh, from 1 to 5 which is a descendant of 1. Which is an indirect descendant or an indirect child you can say. Okay. So next when we see 5 to 3. This 1 to 3 is, is a very different branch, right? 1 to 3 is different from 1, 4, 5. This is a separate branch. If you just analyze this tree, it has 1, 2, 3 and 4 branches basically. Let's see which branches these are. This is one branch, then 2, then 3, 
and this is the fourth branch. So there are four branches you can say and this five, this node five to three is connecting two nodes from two separate branches. So such a edge is known as a cross edge, right? And similarly, this two to three is also a cross edge because it is again connecting two nodes from two separate branches. Okay, so that's all for the different types of edges in this graph. I'll also be making a separate video to uh, describe all the possible types of edges which are uh, uh, which are there in a graph and you may please refer to that and I'll also insert its link over here in this video. So uh, we'll discuss that in detail in that video and that's all for now and till then I'll be back with you with more examples and more concepts. Till then, stay tuned, keep learning, keep practicing more and more since many exams are coming. And till then, stay tuned, like the video if you like it, stay subscribed and keep pressed, uh, keep the notifications icon, bell icon pressed for the more updates. Thank you. Thank you very much.